Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we were still working on our zombie. We added in the special effects to allow the, the zombie to be cut, lit on fire. So if you've got a fire-based weapon or you know anything like that, then you can light your zombie on fire. Uh, and we added in our floating GUI and our floating health bar. And that's going to allow us today to tackle the code uh, for the enemy health. All right, this enemy health code will be able to be used for anything that you want to destroy. If you want to destroy a, you know, a crate or a, a wall or an, an enemy zombie, anything like that, you'll be able to use this code today. Okay, let's get started. Okay, guys, so this is going to be a straight up coding session. Uh, so let's get moving. Uh, we're going to go into our zombie. We're going to go to the top layer of our zombie, so the uppermost, uh, uppermost uh, parent, like the actual root of it. And we're going to say add component. And we're going to add a brand new script, new script. And we're going to call it enemy health. All right, enemy health. And let's double click to get this thing started. Enemy health. All right, great. Now, the first thing we're going to do is right at the top, we're going to say using Unity Engine, oops, and gin dot UI. Okay, and that's going to give us access to all of the UI assets. Uh, we are going to be accessing our the the uh, health floating health bar we made. Uh, I think last uh, last episode, uh, we're going to be accessing that, so we're going to need access to it through the uh, Unity Engine .UI. All right, so let's go in here. We're going to add a bunch of a bunch of um, asset, or, sorry, a bunch of variables right away. Public, float, and we're going to add something that's going to be our maximum enemy's health. So enemy, enemy, max health. Let's call it that. Enemy max health. That's the maximum amount of health that the enemy can have. That's what they start off with. Let's say. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to have is we're going to have a public, uh, it's going to be a modifier, it's going to be a float, uh, once again, float, and we're going to call this thing here uh, damage modifier. Now what this damage modifier is going to be, it's going to be a multiplier, and uh, the damage modifier itself is going to allow you to, uh, to change how much damage this character takes. So if there's something that's easier to destroy or something that you can't destroy, let's say you could have a damage modifier of zero. It's going to be a multiplier, all right? So if we multiply the damage it takes by zero, uh, then it's not going to actually ever take any damage. So you could make an invincible monster if you really wanted to, okay? Uh, and you could also make it so that something dies a lot easier. It's going to be completely up to you guys. Okay, next thing we're going to add, um, we're going to add a public, uh, and we're going to add, it's going to be a game object, game object, and it's going to be our, um, which we haven't designed yet, and we probably should have done, designed it last episode, our damage particles. Uh, particles. You know what, we'll just use the ones we have for the, well, we'll make something. I'm not worried. <laughs> All right, damage particles. I'll have to make those before we can go forward. All right, and uh, we're also going to have uh, an option here. Um, we're going to have a public game object. And we're going to call this drop. And basically what we're going to allow is our character, our enemy is going to be allowed to either drop something. Let's, let's say you kill it, uh, it might drop a health pickup or, or a jump boost or who knows what, right? Some kind of reward for killing the enemy off. It's not necessarily going to be uh, something that they always do because if we set up our next public bool uh, that we're going to call drops, and if drops is true, then it's going to drop an object. And if it's not, it shan't drop an object. All right. Uh, let's actually reverse these. I want to cut this. I'm going to put it right here. That way it'll show up in the appropriate order uh, on our actual uh, on our actual inspector. All right. So uh, we're also going to need a public uh, audio clip. Audio clip and that we're going to call death sound. So when the when this character actually dies, it'll make a death sound of some kind, letting you know that it died. Now. We're also going to have a public, there's a lot of these, sorry guys, bool uh, that we're going to call can burn. Now, in the last episode, we actually added in a, we actually added in a, uh, a fire effect, all right? And if can burn is true, then we're actually going to set it up so that we, we take damage. So we take burn damage, all right? And we'll show the effect uh, and we'll take burn damage. If, if can burn is false, then we can't actually set this thing on fire. All right, in that case, what we need is a public and we're going to set up the damage slightly different. Float, 
uh, and we're gonna call this burn damage okay and burn damage uh, by making it a public float like this then different things will take different amount of damage from fire uh, maybe you want your undead to take more damage than a real a regular person or maybe you want you know your paper monster or whatever to take more damage than your rock monster if you're doing some kind of whatever paper scissors rock thing anyway um, that's great now we also need our public and this is gonna be a game object our public game object and we're gonna actually call this burn effects all right and oops semicolon uh, the burn effects we actually put in place uh, last time it's the actual fire uh, image the actual fire particles we built and we are going to uh, maintain that we're, we're actually gonna have a reference to it so we can change that out and therefore we can have, have different fires so let's say you wanted a blue fire for something etc etc all right now uh, we're also going to add in here uh, a couple of private variables so we're gonna have bool and obviously if we've been lit on fire we have to know if we're actually on fire so bool on fire we want to know our float and the burn time all right so how long how long something can burn for burn time and if you really wanted to you could you could actually set this up as a once again you could set it up as a as a public and and maybe we should actually consider doing that i'm going to get rid of this for now burn time i'm going to leave it like this and i'm going to set this up as a public function uh, as a public variable and that way, along with our burn effects that you can change, and our oops, uh, and the fact that we we can take different damage, we can burn for a different amount of time. All right, I'm gonna dump this. We don't need this anymore. Goodbye, you. All right, so that I made into a public variable. Uh, our float, and we're gonna call this next burn. So how often that we're gonna take our rate that we're gonna take uh, damage at, and our burn interval. Uh, float burn interval so when is the next time we're going to take damage and how often we take damage uh, let's actually set this up so everything takes damage after one second all right we'll set up so fire kind of works like that and lastly a float end burn all right and end burn is the time that we actually turn off the fire okay all right now we're gonna need a couple more things on here we're gonna need a float need our current health because we know our maximum health, we have to know where we at currently. Where are we at? Where are we currently at as far as our maximum health is concerned? It's our current health. All right. Uh, we're going to add in another public, uh, and it's going to be a slider. Uh, and this slider is going to be our enemy uh, health indicator, I guess we'll call it indicator. All right. And that is actually our slider that we've already created. And lastly, we're going to have to know, uh, let's make an audio source, an audio source, why is this out of space, an audio source, and uh, we're going to call it enemy uh, audio source. All right, and that's just going to allow us to play our different sounds depending on what's going on. Okay, so I think, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to need for now. Uh, and well, let's go down to our start function. I'm going to set a bunch of returns under here so you guys can see. Uh, let's go down to our start function. And in our start function, we're going to have to set up a, a couple of different things. First of all, we're going to set our current health equal to our enemy max health. All right, that way our, our enemies start off with full health. You can decide to do that if you want to, or you could set up a, a function that would go through and actually change, uh, change what they started off with. Um, I'm also going to have our enemy health indicator and a dot max value. So we're going to set our maximum value of that equal to our current health. I guess we can do it that way, or we can set it to our enemy max health. Enemy max health. All right, semicolon. Uh, we are going to set up our current value, our enemy health indicator dot value uh, is going to be equal to our current uh, health. All right. And lastly, we're going to try and find our enemy uh, AS. We're going to look for this. It's going to be equal to enemy AS is equal to get component. Get component. We're looking for our audio audio source, uh, and uh, that's it. All right. Let me just save that file. Save. Okay. So now we are going to add in a couple of public. Uh, functions. First of all, we're going to have a public void add damage. 
Uh, and it's going to take one uh, one variable, one uh, variable. It's going to be a float. It can probably be an int, uh, but we're going to make it a float, and we're going to call it damage. All right. So uh, this is basically going to be public access to the character's current health. Uh, it's going to go through. Something else is going to make a call to this. It's going to add its damage. Let's say we shoot it. It's going to make a call to this function. This function is going to go through and sub subtract the uh, damage that's done uh, from the enemy's health. It's going to make changes to the actual GUI as well. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is is we're going to set our our actual. Um, slider to be visible okay uh, we set it up so that its current state it's invisible it's actually set as inactive and as long as it's inactive we can't see it and that'll prevent our GUI our actual screen from being cluttered up with with health um, floating health bars so the first thing we want to do is find our enemy health indicator uh, we want to go to the top layer of it so the game object itself the game object itself and we want to set active uh, equal to no, what am I saying? We don't want to say equal. We want to say true. True. All right. Uh, so what that basically does is goes on and turns on the visibility of that actual game object. All right. So that's going to suddenly be available. Damage. How much damage is actually going to be done? Uh, so first of all, if we shoot this thing here, it's doing, let's say, five damage or whatever we decided the gun can do. But we've added in a damage multiplier as well. So we're going to have a damage times um, our, what did I call it? What did I call it? Let me take a look, I forget. I called it damage modifier. Damage modifier. So we're gonna multiply by our damage modifier, and that way if it's zero, we can just jump out of here right away, all right? So we might be able to shoot something and not do any damage, like I said. So if damage um, is less than or equal to, equal to zero, then get out of here, we'll just return. Return. All right, no no reason to go further than that. All right, if we're not doing any damage, get out of here. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to take the current health uh, and we want to subtract. We want to subtract uh, it from uh, damage. Or we want to subtract damage from the current health, sorry. All right, bam. So basically, that's just a short form of saying current health equals current health minus damage. Okay, after that, we want to set our enemy health now, our enemy health indicator. All right, so we want to take our enemy health indicator and we want to set the value um, equal to our current health, okay? And that way it's always up to date. Uh, and we want to play our damage uh, sound, all right? If we've done damage, we want to make sure that the, the player knows it. So enemy as dot play, uh, and we've only got one thing in there, so that's cool. Uh, all right, that's our melee hit sound that we set up before. And lastly, we want to check and see if this guy is dead. If he's dead, we want to do something about it. So if our current health is less than or equal to zero, uh, then I want to call a function that I'm going to write in a minute called make dead. All right, so that's all we really need for our that public function. All right, let's file save that. Bam, bam, bam. Now I'm going to need a a uh, we're going to need a couple other functions here. Um, I'm going to need a make dead function. All right, so let's add that in next because we've already tried to access to here and we haven't done anything with it. So void. This is not going to be a public function. This is going to be a regular function. Make dead. All right, it's not going to take any variables at all. Uh, and there is our braces. Okay, and there's only a couple of things that we actually want to do. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to access, uh, well, we don't even have it yet. Um, ultimately, we're going to want to access our zombie controller. Uh, so for now, uh, we're all we're going to do, and, and, and ultimately, we're going to want to create a ragdoll. All right, so I'm going to say this in here. Um, turn off movement and uh, create a ragdoll. All right, uh, so for now, we're not gonna do anything else, all right? Uh, we're not gonna do anything else. For now, all we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna actually play a clip that, that, we're gonna go back and do that stuff later, <laughs> don't worry. Um, for now, all we're gonna do is destroy this actual object, so we're gonna destroy the game object. Uh, and we actually want to make sure that we're doing a little more than that. We want Go to the game object dot transform dot root 
dot game object and destroy that. All right, and that way, this way here, if we have put this make dead on some other location other than the top of our actual uh, character, we can still actually destroy this. So that's what we're doing there. Um, you could have just put destroy game object and that would have worked perfectly fine for this particular character. Uh, but in case it's not within the, we want to destroy the entire hierarchy. So this way here, even if this, if this enemy health is not in the top location, we're still going to end up destroying everything. All right, and that's good. Now, if drops is true, drops, all right? If drops is true, that means this character can actually drop something. And what do I want to drop? I want to instantiate. Uh, what do I want to instantiate? I want to instantiate the drop, which I, I keep putting drop, the drop, which I described above. Where do I want to do it? At this transforms uh, position. Uh, and which rotation? At this transforms, not little t, I want little t, transform dot rotation. All right, so we're going to drop it right where this character was standing. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. We've got a lot of stuff to add to this in the future, um, but right now we're not going to worry about it. Uh, you know what, the last thing we're going to do, we are going to add in an audio source here because uh, we already defined that. Um, we're going to do audio source, audio source, and we're going to use a function called play clip at point. And what this allows us to do is play a sound regardless of uh, regardless of whether or not we've destroyed this object, all right? If, if we try and play a sound from an audio source that's associated with this object and has been destroyed, uh, then it won't work. So we're going to play our death sound. Uh, where are we going to play it? We're going to play it uh, right here. Transform dot position, all right? And then we can put in the volume. Uh, let's give it a value of 0.15f to make sure that it's not too loud, okay? Boom. Okay, now let's file save this. Great. All right. Now what we need is we're going to add another public function here, public void, and we're going to call this uh, add fire. Add fire. And it's not going to take any variables. And boom, boom, boom. All right. And add fire is going to work at the same, very similar to the way that add uh, damage worked. Instead, what we're going to have is we're going to have a an, a, a weapon or something that can cause fire damage, and if it can, we're going to make a call to the add fire function. All right. So first of all, if not can burn, so if it can't burn, so if not can burn, all right, we just want to return. All right, because if this thing can't return, or if this thing can't burn, then we don't want to set it on fire. All right. Otherwise, we want to set on fire uh, equal to true. Okay. This thing has been lit on fire. Great. We want to start our burn effects. Our burn effects. We want to uh, we want to turn them on. All right. So right now our burn effects are currently turned off. Uh, and when I say turned off, we have the uh, they're not set to active. So uh, I'm going to simply set the set active equal to true. All right. So it's going to start our burn. It's going to make our burn effects visible in the same way that our GUI became visible when we first shot this thing. Now we're going to set up our end burn time. All right. End burn time is going to equal to our time dot time plus uh, our burn time. So how long this thing can burn for? All right. So however long can you burn for? Uh, that's the one we're going to end our, our burn time. The next burn time or the next burn damage is going to be equal to time. Oops. Going to be equal to time dot time plus our burn interval. Interval. All right. So that's the first thing right away. Um, if it's on fire, we can actually set up our burn time to set the thing on to do damage afterwards. All right. And normally, what we do is what we're gonna we're gonna have a weapon that that uh, hits this guy, and it's gonna do damage. So we're gonna call the add damage effect, and then we're also gonna call the add fire effect. And the damage initially set will be set by the fireball hitting him, and then the fire damage will come one second later. So we don't take fire damage and our damage initially. All right, you can set that up if you want to, uh, simply by doing uh, by doing a call to add damage here first of all, and setting up damage that comes in as well. You could do it that way if you really wanted to. I'm not going to do it like that though. Or you could set it up so you you immediately add damage right here, uh, equal to the amount of fire. All right, uh, that you could also do. Um, uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. Uh, so now the last thing we're going to do 
uh, that's all fine. This is all done. We have to set up a couple of things now. Just because we have got this thing burning, it's never going to go out. So we're going to go up here to our update. And in our update, we're going to start to look at how long this thing's been burning for. And we're going to we're going to put out the fire if we really need to. All right. So if on fire is true and ampersand ampersand uh, our time dot time uh, is greater than our next burn well, then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here gonna add in our braces so we can write our code and we are going to add damage all right add damage how much damage are we going to do we're going to do burn damage burn damage all right, that's what we're going to ask, uh, set. And we're going to set our next burn. Our next burn is plus equals our current burn, obviously, plus our burn interval, plus our burn interval. All right, so we're only going to be taking damage once every second. OK, and that's all we have to do. We can get rid of this now. Now, the next thing we want to check is else, or sorry, if we're on fire and and uh, our time dot, oops, our time dot time uh, is greater than our end burn. Uh, that means it is time to put our fire out. So once again, brace and brace. Boom, boom, boom. All right, we're going to set our on fire to equal false. And we are going to set our turn our burn effects off. So burn, and we're not going to slowly turn them off. They're just going to be like set, we're just going to deactivate them. All right, uh, we're going to set our burn effects dot set active uh, to false. All right, and that's going to turn off our fire. All right, so we're looking pretty good here. We're looking pretty good. Uh, what else do we need to do? Oh, uh, we want to be able to turn on our damage effects. All right, and we mentioned this already. I haven't actually made these yet, but we're going to need one more public. Let's, let's add it in right under here. Uh, one other public. Uh, Void, uh, and we're gonna call this damage effects. I guess, I guess that's fine. Damage effects. It is uh, going to take a number of a number of variables. First of all, it's going to take a vector three, uh, and it's going to be the point uh, that this thing is at. We'll call it point. All right. Let me move this down so you guys can see a little better. Point, uh, and we're gonna have another vector three vector three, and we'll call this one here uh, rotation. All right, and we'll add in our braces so we can write our code. And the actual uh, the actual effects are very, very easy. All we want to happen is we want to instantiate, instantiate our damaged particles, damaged particles, which I'll have to go create in a second, uh, and where, at point, and with rotation. Okay, and that's, no, that's a lie. <laughs> Not with rotation, what am I saying? Uh, we have to do it with quaternion dot Euler dot ro or rotation, sorry, rotation. All right, and that just allows us to go from, to go from uh, our Euler to quaternion. That's all. All right, guys. So I think that's all we need to currently uh, do without actually having our ragdoll effect and without actually having our movement, I think. I think that's all of our code. So let me file save this. Uh, I'm going to go off for a second and I'm going to go build some particles. I'm not going to make you guys watch me build the particles. This is going to be a really long episode. You guys, can, I'll, I'll show you what they are afterwards and uh, you guys can see it really quickly. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so the code for our enemy health is done. However, we can't actually hurt our enemy yet. So we got to do a number of things. First of all, I know everything is great. I fi okay, I finished. First of all, I finished. I put it in prefabs. I finished a enemy, or sorry, a zombie hit effects. It's right here, and it's basically the same as our. It's basically the same as our our character death effects. I just made it much smaller. Okay, I just went the easy route. If we take a look at our zombie now, everything has worked out properly. I've got a maximum health in here. Uh, let's give him a maximum health of, let's say, 20. Um, uh, damage modifier of 1. I don't actually want this thing to take less damage for any reason, uh, so that's fine. Damage modifier of 1. If I want to take no damage, then I could actually go through and put 0 there. Uh, I am going to drop into my damage particles, my zombie hit effects. 
I'm going to drop them there. Uh, my drops, I'm going to say it's true. Whenever we kill a zombie, we're going to get something. And what are we going to get? We're going to get a health pickup. Okay, I'm going to drop that in there. Uh, I'm going to set up my death sound right away. My death sound is going to be the... Do I have something here for zombie death? I forget. Let's go down to the bottom and say zombie death. I do. Great. Actually, I took the Minecraft sounds. <laughs> All right, we're going to set up can burn to be true uh, for now, uh, and we're going to set up burn damage to equal, let's say, four. Uh, and burn time is going to equal to four seconds. All right, it doesn't really matter what we pick right now. The burn effect, the burn effect of this is going to be fire. I'm going to drag my fire, and I'm going to drop it on there. That's my burn effect. And lastly, my slider is going to be my enemy health slider. Now, now that's great. We filled all of this in. That's We had to fill all that in, and we did. Now, we've got a problem, because previously, when we actually wrote our shooting code, we didn't have an enemy health script. We couldn't actually shoot or destroy or kill anything. Now we have to go back, and we have to take a look at our shooting code. Um, we've got two of them. We have our shoot bullet, and we have our shoot fireball. Uh, and shoot fireball was when we were shooting something that was fire, and shoot bullet was the actual bullet that we created originally. All right, we're going to have to make a number of changes to this script in order to be able to, to make, to do the damage that we want to do to our character, uh, to our zombie. Originally, all we had is we had a line drawn. That's all we did. We, we drew a line from one point to the next. What we really have to do, we have to really go through here, and we have to, we have to go through and we have to find uh, out whether this is an enemy. We have to find out whether or not we can set this enemy on fire. We have to find out a bunch of different things. All right, so... First thing I want to make sure, once again, I want to make sure we did this. Um, let's move that out of the way for now. Uh, make sure we did this. Make sure that our zombie at the top level where we actually have our health script is set to shootable and it's set to enemy. And it is. Great. So let's bring this back over here for a second. Now, what we're going to do is if, all right, if, we already checked and see if this is shootable. Perfect. If, however, this is an enemy, we want to do something. So first of all, if shoot, hit, and... Uh, if you guys remember correctly, we did this a long time ago. Shoot, hit. We shot a ray out of this out of this for the bullet firing. We shot a ray out from this uh, object. We shot a ray forward, and if the ray hit something, it returned what it hit in the shoot, hit value. All right. So if shoot, hit dot collider. So we're taking a look at the collider dot tag um, equals equals quotations enemy. All right. Then we know we've shot an enemy. Great. Let's put in our our braces and our braces. All right. So if it is an enemy, what do we want to do? The first thing we want to do is we want to find the enemy health that we just created. So enemy health. Uh, enemy health. Uh, let's call it just the enemy health. <laughs> it doesn't matter what we call it. Uh, let's capitalize that E. The enemy health is going to be equal to, and we're going to go through and we're going to find it. All right. So shoot hit dot collider dot get component all right we're going to try and get the component and we're going to try and find get component and we're going to try and find our enemy health and we're making the assumption that the enemy health is on the top layer all right it's on the top layer is what we're assuming okay uh, if we actually find it so if we actually find one if enemy health equals is not null so if enemy or the enemy health I call it if the enemy health uh, is not equal to null, meaning we actually found an enemy health, uh, then what we want to do is let's add in our braces and our braces. Uh, what we want to do is we want to call a number of things. We want to call the enemy health, we want to call the enemy health uh, dot add damage. All right, we want to call add damage for this weapon. And how much damage we want to do? We want to do damage. All right, we already defined how much damage this thing could do. It can do a total of five. All right. So far, so good. We're making a public call to add damage, and we're uh, adding damage. We also want to make a call to the public uh, uh, damage effects. All right, and we want to send in a couple of things. What? Our shoot hit dot point. All right, that's where we hit, and we want to hit. We want it to face in the opposite direction uh, that we shot from. So shoot, uh, shoot ray. What did I call it? I thought I called it shoot ray. Shoot. I thought it would be ray dot direction here. I can't remember. Shoot. Uh, I thought it was ray dot direction. 
let's see what happens when I write this. It looks like it, it's taking it. So all right, uh, I have yeah. Shoot ray is where I hear. Shoot ray, good. Shoot ray dot direction. All right, so we're, we're having it point in the opposite direction of shoot ray. All right, and that's all we need for this section here. Uh, and I think everything else is perfectly fine. All right, I'm gonna file save this. File save. I'm gonna file save enemy health. File save. I already did. Now our shoot fireball is gonna be slightly different. Uh, our shoot fireball allows us the chance to actually set something on fire. Uh, and let me see, let me see. So right in here, uh, we're checking to see if we are hitting something that's shootable. But that's not the only thing we want to check. We want to check and see if it's shootable, and we also want to check. We also want to check if it's the enemy. All right. So let's check that too. So if let's put it right here in the front. Other dot tag uh, equals equals quotations enemy quotations or so or is the is this symbol right here so double double lines or it's shootable so we have two choices in there if it's either the enemy or it's shootable we want to do a couple of things first of all set our velocity equal to zero we also want to check right away and we want to set we want to see if we've got an enemy health component all right so right in here I'm gonna add a couple of returns uh, we're gonna do the same thing enemy health uh, and we'll call it uh, the enemy health again. The enemy health is going to be equal to once again other dot get component get component, and once again we are looking for our enemy health. Uh, close that off. Do do doop and do do. Now if uh, if it's not null, so if same thing we did before. If the enemy health uh, does not equal null then we know we've actually got ourselves a health script and we can do a number of things. Uh, in this case here we're going to do the uh, the enemy health dot add damage. All right, That's the first thing we're going to do is add damage. How much damage? Once again we're going to do damage. We're going to do damage damage. Oops. All right and then we're going to call the enemy health dot add fire. All right this is a fireball. This is shooting for shooting a fireball so we're going to actually add a fireball. Uh, so we're going to add fire. That's all we have to do. All right, and it's going to automatically turn on the fire. And let's close that off. I should close up my braces right away. And let me file save that. All right, I think that's all we need to do. Let's go over here and make sure there's no errors. Let's move this out of the way. Let's go to our console. Console. All right, clear. No errors. Okay, so far, so good. Now. Let's give this a try. If I hit play right now, my enemy shouldn't move. I should be able to turn. I should be able to shoot him. All right, great. There we go. We're seeing the health bar work. And we're shooting him, and there is our health drop. I obviously want to turn that health drop 90 degrees because that didn't work exactly the way we'd like it to. So we'll go in and we'll do that. Let me just do this again. and it's working. All right, that's great. It sounds like the wrong ding on there. Uh, so I'll have to take a look at that too. So that part is working. So far, so good. Okay, now we're gonna check out the fireball. I just went in and changed that, uh, that health ding because <laughs> it bothered me. Um, all right, so let's go in and take a look at the fireball now. So uh, taking a look at our character, if we take a look at our soldier, uh, remember correctly, we had our gun muzzle and our gun muzzle went through and it fired a specific projectile. In our prefabs, we have already created our fireball projectile um, right here, and our fireball, uh, the fireball itself right here. Make sure your damage is set to an appropriate amount. Uh, I've got mine set to five right now. So I'm gonna go into my gun muzzle, and I'm gonna replace this fire bullet uh, with uh, this uh, projectile, fireball projectile. Now, when I hit play, what should happen is I should be able to shoot a fireball at this guy, and he should catch fire. There we go. He's on fire, he's burning away, and afterwards when he finally dies, when the fire itself kills him, you saw how the, that was a progression. Let me do that one more time, and then I'll go back and check that bell to make sure it worked. Uh, let's go in here. So um, we can see right now the pro progression of the fire is going to kill him, and it kills our guy. Let's jump on here, and there we go. That's the right bell. So that's it. Our fireball works as well. So that's perfect, guys. That's exactly what we want to happen. Uh, right now, our zombie simply disappears uh, when we kill it. Uh, and that's not exactly what we want, ultimately. Let's put our bullet back right away before I forget. Uh, bullet. 
And actually, let's change our fireball damage. We want the initial fireball damage to be a little higher. Let's put it at, let's say, let's say 10. So it does double, because it shoots much slower. Uh, so anyway, um, our fireball works and our bullet works, and that is awesome. It kills our guy off. Right now, he just disappears. Later on, we're going to replace him with a rag doll uh, when we get into our special effects, and that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, and the fire itself progressively kills this creature as well. So now you can go through and you could add fire effects to anything else you want to as well. If you want to set up things so that they could be lit on fire, if you wanted destructible terrain and that kind of thing, uh, you could go through and you could do it. All right, you just have to go through and you have to add uh, our enemy health script to different objects. Okay, this is working really well. We have a little ways to go still. Right now our, our zombie goes through. We, he damages us, I think. Let's go in and check, because I, I never even checked that. Let's make sure he damages us. <coughs> he does. All right, I took damage. Awesome. Um, so, <coughs> ooh, I can really push him around too. I outweigh <coughs> him, all right? <coughs> oh, he killed me. <laughs> I try to get away on time. Anyway, um, we'll have to make sure we can't push him around. I think our, our player must weigh a lot more than the zombie. Let's double check. Our soldier. No, he has a mass of one. So how much did our zombie weigh? We don't want that. We don't want the. We don't want anyone to be able to push around anybody else. So we'll have to go around and, and check those things out. How much does our zombie weigh? He also weighs one. We're gonna have to go in and make sure that no one can be pushed around. All right. Maybe we'll have to increase the drag or something later on. We'll we'll check that in a bit uh, to make sure the gameplay itself is balanced and working the way we want it to. Uh, but everything else is working now. Uh, in the next episode, guys, we'll move on to actually having this zombie uh, be able to move about and detect us. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. I love to hear from you. Send me some comments. Let me know how your games are going. You know, I really hope that you are learning a lot uh, from what we're doing here. I hope you guys are putting together some really great games. Uh, I love playing games, and if you make a great game, I want to play your great game. All right, guys? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.